tip for you guys. Um, one of the reasons that we are doing this on Facebook Live is it makes the show so much easier to share. So if you have like a team group or something like that and you want to share this broadcast or really any broadcast, all you have to do is click the little share button and then that tells people how to join and access it. So it's actually so much easier than say, you know, like a webinar or a Zoom where you have to send a link and kind of hope that people have it like downloaded. So without further ado, like I said, we have a super packed show tonight. I'm actually really excited about tonight's show. And um, because it's so packed, I kind of want to go ahead and just get started right away. So welcome everybody to the Go Now Game Plan. This is um, the March 2019 edition. And as you know, this show happens on the first Monday of every month. Um, and then we have some special edition broadcasts that we do as well. Um, and the show features some recurring segments. So tonight, we're actually going to be covering some social media tips. And um, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how much you should be posting and how frequently and um, when the ideal posting time is, because I bet you didn't know that was a thing on various platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, because you know we've been focusing so hard on content, um, and you have such great content. You've got great stories, great images, great testimonials, and now I just wanna make sure that when you post it, it's actually being shown um, to the right people. Uh, we're also gonna talk a little bit in Consumer Corner, which is our second uh, segment of the night, about turn up and I talked to Dr. D today and I learned some amazing things about this product. I've taken this product for a very long time since it came out so I'm going to share with you my testimonial about the product but I'm also going to share with you about why it's better than things like Monster or Red Bull or other energy drinks that are on the market. Um, from there we're going to talk about a shopping annuity hack and there's a brand new thing. You may have noticed that your homepage on unfranchise.com looks a little bit different um, these past couple of weeks. So I wanna tell you what's there and what to look for and how often it's gonna change and kinda of like what to expect and how to make the most of it because I want you to really, really benefit from all of the great work that the Unfranchise Marketing team is doing. After that, we're gonna do a quick retailing segment. Our retailing segment's a little bit shorter tonight, but it's all about how to build your customer with samples. Um, Gary Rogers is the master at this. I mean, if you talk to anybody, he has so many customers, um, and Phil Guido, too, is really great at this. And one of the ways that he, ha one of the reasons he has so many customers is because he is sharing, uh, he delivers product and he, and he drop ships product himself, but he also does a couple of extra things. I'm going to tell you what those things are. Um, after that, probably the segment I'm so excited for is our business building segment tonight. And that is going to be all of the intangibles about how to sit down on a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one -on -one appointment to show the plan. So we all know that there's you know, a PowerPoint presentation, that there's a video, that there's a flip chart, there's multiple ways like, to physically go through the slides. But what I'm gonna tell you tonight are all of the things that are not on the slides. <laughs> like when you sit down with somebody, let's be real, you probably know that person from some other way or reason in your life, and you don't wanna just sit down with your friend and then just be like, slide number one. It's super weird, it doesn't feel great, um, and it's because it is really weird and there's a there's a better way to do this and Dennis Franks is the master at this and he's done a really nice job of um, kind of like outlining those intangibles and like road mapping out what that conversation really should look like and how it works. So I'm going to go through that with you tonight. Um, our brain spanking of the week is all about the new unfranchised support materials which actually goes live tomorrow. So. Um, you're the first to hear about it because the news, the unfranchised news didn't even go out until, uh, it won't even go out until tomorrow. So um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at that and I'm actually going to go through some frequently asked questions, things to look for tomorrow um, when it is live, sometime in the later afternoon, uh, so you can check that out. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about World Conference that's coming up because we're about to run a campaign um, and seats are very limited. And, you know, as you know, International uh, Convention, or excuse me, World Conference was um, incredible. The feedback from this past event was over the top. And um, because of that, people are working extra hard to get their people to the next event. So I want to kind of talk to you about what that looks like and make sure that you don't miss out. Um, because that's always a possibility. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and pop right on into our socially speaking. So, okay, 
as you all know, um, with social media, you are posting really great content. We know all the basics, the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of what you post should be all like lifestyle stuff, fun stuff, what you're doing, and family stuff, things that you love, sharing quotes or great articles that you've read. 20% is business. And we put a lot of thought into those business posts. I know that you do, I know that I do. And so like sometimes I'll, I'll think of a business post and I'll think about what I want to write for the caption and I'll like ask my friends, like read this caption, do you think that this makes sense or does it sound too corny? Um, or does it, sound, does it sound like something you would like read or actually click on, right? So by the way, that's another tip. If you ever are unsure about something that you're about to post, just go ahead and like ask a friend and I know a lot of people do this. And by the way, if you have questions as we go, I'm looking at the comments, so feel free to send comments in or questions in through the comments, and I will look for them. Um, so anyway, the point is, we put a lot of thought into our posts. And so sometimes you may notice that some of your posts get more engagement than others, more likes, more comments, or whatever. Now, some of that could just straight up be because of the content, right? Maybe the content is better. But another reason for getting more engagement on a post could simply mean that you have posted at an optimal posting time for that platform during that week. Um, and so being aware of when the optimal posting times are can drastically increase the engagement on your post. Um, and also being aware of how frequently you should be posting on platforms can increase the engagement on your posts. Um, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to talk to you about a couple of like four of the top best um, or top performing social media outlets that most people are pretty active on. So the first one, of course, is Facebook. Okay, so we all use Facebook to network. We're all posting on there. We're sharing. We're commenting. We're doing all kinds of stuff on Facebook, right? So how often should you be posting? You should be posting once per day. That's it. There's a lot of people that post a lot on Facebook, and what happens on Facebook is um, it actually can drive the algorithm down if you're doing too much, and what ends up happening is you're pumping out content and people aren't seeing it. So the, the tip there is to post about one time per day on Facebook. The best time to post on Facebook is between 1 and 4 o'clock p.m., your time. Um, so, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you have this urge to post something, just keep that in mind. Like, you can always post, and of course, people are going to go ahead and like it or whatever, but the optimal time for posting on Facebook is between 1 and 4 o'clock p.m. Another little tip for Facebook is you don't want to post more than twice per day. So if you have to do more than that once per day, try really hard not to post more than twice per day. Um, because, again, you don't want to drive your algorithm down. You don't want to make it so that, that Facebook doesn't show your stuff to people because you're oversaturating, right? So once per day is ideal, no more than twice per day. Um, if you have more to post, Facebook and Instagram both have a stories feature. So you can post more stuff in stories. Um, you know, for that, you can do anywhere from three to like six things per day because they only live for 24 hours and people are used to seeing more real-time kind of content. I would advise, though, to avoid turning your, your Facebook stories into something where you just constantly post and then people see like a million little dots because you have so much to go and they feel like they have to tap through your story. So keep that in mind. All right, so that's Facebook. I'm going to breeze through these because we got a lot today. On Twitter, Twitter is like the exact opposite for, for uh, posting frequency. It's actually recommended that you can post up to 15 tweets per day. Now keep in mind that that includes things that maybe you're saying, you're replying, you're retweeting, or whatever. Um, Twitter is more like a real-time conversational platform. Um, you may have noticed that some of your favorite television shows or sporting events or live performances all have people that live tweet the event. Right, so I don't know about you guys, but like I just love Grey's Anatomy, and so like on Thursday nights, I'm watching Grey's Anatomy, and I also have Twitter open, and I'm sitting there watching people live tweet during the entire show because it's like you're watching the show with other people. So live tweeting events is like a, is a thing. Um, and again, it's not just you going out there and just blasting a bunch of your own content on Twitter. Throughout the day, you're retweeting content, you're curating content, um, you are replying to other people's things, and that all kind of um, you know adds up to your 15 per day. 
Now, even if for me, that's a lot. Like for me, I can't manage that much. And I'm probably doing like three to five things per day. And my Twitter seems to perform pretty well. So the more, you know, if you're going to be an incredibly active Twitter account, the, the point here is not to go more than 15. Now, what about LinkedIn? So LinkedIn is another really big one, and we're all business owners, so we want to make professional connections, right? Um, and so on LinkedIn, the recommendation is to post about uh, once per day. And um, the best time for LinkedIn is between 8 and 9 a.m. So it's just proven that most people are going to LinkedIn in the morning as they start their day. And so that's interesting, right? Because for Facebook, we said it was between 1 and 4 p.m. And LinkedIn is in the morning. So if you have like a really great article that you want to share or a quote or something of a professional nature, keep in mind the platform, the best time on LinkedIn is between 8 and 9 a.m. And then the last platform that we're going to hit up is Instagram. I like love Instagram. It's so much fun for me. I actually have this, uh, my favorite app for Instagram planning is called Unum, U-N like Nancy, U-M like Mary. And um, basically you can put all of your, your images in there so you can plan so that the grid looks really nice and you can kind of have an idea for what you want to push out. Um, so. Anyway, uh, Instagram is another one. It's always amazing to me. I see when I see people that like take pictures and then just post them immediately on Instagram. I'm like, oh my, I can't believe you're doing that. Like, or they post like six Instagram photos in a row. Um, on Instagram, it's like the strictest of them all. You really don't want to be posting more than once per day. Um, if you post more than once per day, absolutely, you're going to drive your algorithm down, and absolutely. Um, less people are going to see your stuff, and you're probably even going to get unfollowed. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're playing by the rules and, of every single like playground, right? So on Instagram, it's once per day. Um, and, and just like LinkedIn, uh, the best time there is between 8 and 9 a.m. So you're looking at morning time for Instagram, a morning time for LinkedIn, and an afternoon time for Facebook. Um, on Instagram, another um, another tip, only post when content is relevant to your audience. So do not post more than twice per day. Um, and just like Facebook, you want to leverage the stories from our real-time things. So basically, here's what that means. When you go to my Instagram, mine is like a personal Instagram. It's a lifestyle Instagram. So you're going to see content about my family, about my friends, about dance, sports and business because really those are the five things that really make up who I am. Now if you're, and most people are like that, right? Most people are going to have an Instagram account that's really all about their lives <laughs> and it's a way to connect, right? So it's okay to have like a more broad posting strategy like that. But if you're running like a health and fitness one and your Instagram's goal and purpose is to, you know, attract new TLS customers, for example, maybe yours is all fitness or um, fitness and health and wellness related, right? So just keep that in mind. If you have this health and wellness account and then, you know, you happen to be at a NASCAR event and you're having, you know, snacks with your friends and enjoying yourself, it's not the, it's not the right content. So just keep in mind, like, why are you there? What kind of content are you pushing? Does this fit? And are you oversaturating? So in general, on social media, that is probably the number one rule is it's not more like oversaturate the platforms and you get lots of people engaging with you. It's actually less is more. <laughs> actually, you may notice that a lot of the corporate channels are actually pulling back on how much they post because there's a lot of research that shows um, that the ideal for Instagram is actually between seven and 12 posts per week on a corporate channel. For a personal channel, it's like anywhere from three to five per week. Um, so no more than once per day. Again, if you have more to say and more to share, throw them up in the stories. Um, you can also turn them into highlights if you really wanted to. But anyway, those are the ideal times. Just a little tip, you guys. Um, if you are subscribed to uh, emails from Market America, you also probably received the UFO Marketing Rundown. All of those tips, including how many times per day, uh, optimal times to post, and those extra little tips are actually included in the socially speaking section of that email campaign. So you can always go back and check for that later. Um, thank you guys. So I'm, this is great. Um, now, what is your post for the week? So your post for the week is simple. You are going to share 
your magic moment from any major event. It can be this last world conference. It could have been an international convention. It could have been a basic five, right? So whatever ma magic moment you've had that you want to share, whether it was an aha moment or the moment that the light bulb went off or something where you finally felt it, the business really got into you. Well, I want you to share that story on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter appropriately. So what that basically means is on Facebook, it may be a little bit more wordy and have the image. You're all on, on Instagram, it's going to be, you know, it, that'll be your post for the day. On Twitter, it's going to be text related. And you're going to use two hashtags. You're going to use MA Magic Moment, and you're going to use uh, hashtag Shopping Annuity. So you actually want to look for those magic moments and curate them and, re and repost them ourselves. Now, one, when you make those posts, I want you to keep in mind the recommended uh, time to post it. And I want you to just try that out, experiment with those optimal posting times and frequencies and see how that, that affects your engagement. So if your engagement goes up, that means your likes go up, your comments go up, your views go up, then that means it's working. Um, and I want you to start off with your hashtag MA magic moment. Okay, so we're going to switch gears now and we're going to talk about some products. So the product that we're going to be talking about today is Turn Up. So normally I'm drinking whatever product of the night it is that we're talking about, but this one is one for energy, focus, and clarity. So I would like to go to sleep tonight, so I'm actually going to take um, the turn down <laughs> instead, but when I'm done. Um, so uh, let's just talk about some high-level things about turnups so we all know. So first of all, you'll notice that they come in these really convenient packets. So that makes this product really easy to travel with. It makes this product easy to give out um, as a sample. Um, and it makes this product um, easy to share with friends, like to have a couple extra on hand. Um, a couple of other really great things about it. It's gluten-free. There are no detectable GMOs. It's isotonic capable, which we all know means that our body can absorb it better, especially when it's taken on an empty stomach. Um, some of the high-level benefits is it helps you to increase your energy. It provides strong antioxidant protection, improves your mental focus, your cognitive health. It promotes normal regulation of enzymes and hormones. It helps with energy and stamina. Um, and again, it's an isotonic, drinkable um, supplement. So all of those things that I just said um, are reason enough to take to try this product, right? But the thing is, is I think that people sometimes maybe look at the box and you get 30 in a box and they, they get a little bit of maybe sticker shock, right? So this product actually, I'm just going to go ahead and go here. It actually um, retails for uh, $79 for 30 and we get it at wholesale for $57. All that basically means is the average cost per serving for an unfranchised older owner is $1.90. Um, so if you own an unfranchised, you can get this product for about, a or for about $1.90 per serving, and your customers can get them for about $2.60 per serving. So the reason I say that is because um, anybody that has had that price objection, and I've, I've heard this a lot, like that product is so great, but it's kind of a lot. You're getting 30. If you were to buy a case of 30, um, Starbucks drinks, you would spend the same amount of money and you would have maybe 10% of the benefits, right? So think about other energy products that people will spend money on. People go into Starbucks and they spend three and a half dollars on a drink there and they don't blink an eye. Um, and they do it every day. So think about what that adds up to. Let's say it was three dollars a day for um, for 30 days, that's 90 bucks, right? That's 90 bucks for your Starbucks coffee and all that's going to give you is a boost of caffeine and a lot of sugar you probably don't want or need, right? You can spend less money and get a better energy boost um, and a better product by choosing to take turn up instead. So I talked with Dr. Deidre just a little bit this morning. And I said, talk to me a little bit about why this product is better because I know I feel better on it. Um, when I take um, my coffee in the afternoon because I'm feeling a little bit of a drag, first of all, my stomach always feels super acidic from that because I've already had a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. And so by having more coffee in the afternoon, it just really, really like kills me, right? So, um, so I don't want to do that. And I've switched to taking um, a turn up or a B complex in the afternoon instead. And she said, well, it's a, here are the big things. So turn up is a mixture of amino acids for both mental endurance as well as physical endurance paired with antioxidants 
that helps to burn fatty acids for energy instead of sugar. So first of all, doesn't that just sound better? Wouldn't you rather burn fatty um, acids instead of sugar? Too many quick energy drinks on the market focus on caffeine and sugar, which will give you that bump for a short period of time, which you know, we, we get that, that's why we do it. There's a reason why we reach for that rock star or that afternoon coffee, because we want that quick, um, short period burst of energy, but it also comes with a guaranteed crash, right? That moment afterwards where you actually just feel like you are in a fog. I mean, I get that, I've, I've felt that before. So, um, when you use amino acids paired with any offensive bone fatty acid, you're able to burn energy both mentally and physical over a long period of time. The product was specifically formulated to help people get mental focus. So here's the big thing. This is why it's really different, you guys. It's not just about sustained energy, but also about acuity and clarity. Now, isn't that better? Why do you think people take turn up? It's not just to wake up, they want their acuteness back. They want their mental clarity back, right? They don't wanna just be bouncing off the walls. In fact, that's one of the reasons that people dislike energy drinks. Um, and so it's really important to understand it's not just about that energy boost, but it's like you're taking, um, you know, the ability to maintain activity for a longer period of time with more mental clarity. So when I talked to Dr. D about this um, this morning, all of that clicked for me um, because that's exactly why I love this product is I would feel like I take this product and instead of feeling like I'm jittery and feeling kind of nuts and like I'm racing and I can't sit still and I just, you know, and then wanting to fall asleep like an hour later, when I take this product, I get a healthy amount of energy that lasts long and then you come down off of nice and slow. So you're not hitting a wall at the end of the, at the, end of the experience it's simply just a really nice, healthy energy boost that lasts over a longer period of time. And it's for all of those scientific reasons that Dr. D explained to me this morning, which by the way, a lot of that is actually in the product details page on unfranchise.com. So again, I want you guys to try this product. It's honestly like the best thing ever. You can see mine are all wrinkled because I have this little bag that I keep all my samples in um, and my, my travel products in. So I've got my you know, I have everything, Trim Cafe, Daily Essentials, Women's Health, Anti-Aging, Turn Up, Turn Down, I have everything. Like, I don't go anywhere without my products. Um, so they get a little wrinkled, but it's the best product ever. And again, it's it's an unfranchised cost for $57 um, for 30 packets. That's about $1.90 per serving. Um, and you can retail that for $79.95, so your customer is spending about $2.5 per serving for that. Again, cheaper than a Starbucks coffee and way more benefit and way healthier than just taking a caffeine and sugar induced drink in the, in the afternoon, right? Um, you get 40 BV with that. So the BV to, to unfranchise cost ratio is excellent. Um, and the unfranchise cost on that is 6703. Um, so your call to action, if you've never taken this product or even if you have, order that product tonight so that you can try it. Um, it's also a very sampleable type of product that you would want to ha um, have on hand to give out. Okay, so um, we're going to switch gears again. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about our shopping annuity hack. So, um, and again, I'm seeing all of the comments in here before I actually move on. Lots of people saying, okay, I get it now. I get it now. That's great. Um, all of her nine, yes, doc I agree, Christy. Dr. D has so much knowledge. Um, is there any caffeine in this product, Sharon? I don't actually believe that there is. I think it's mostly B complex and B vitamins. Uh, there's potassium, there's a number of products, but all of the ingredients are on, um, on the product details page. You can know that for sure over there. Um, all right, perfect. So we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna talk about our shopping annuity hack of the week. So the new homepage of unfranchise.com has been live for quite some time. So at the top of your homepage, you will actually notice that there is a, um, a bar of, it's called the Business Center. And of course, you have all these cool little widgets in there that show you your BV, your IBV, your tax savings with deductor, like everything that you could need to know to run your business at a glance is in that top slider, which is awesome. Now, over the last couple of weeks, you may have also noticed that there are product carousels and other banners that are showing up on your homepage. And so I wanted to talk to you about what those banners were um, so that you could maximize them. So before I do that, 
um, I want to show you kind of what uh, all of those ban banners are centered around. Um, right now, there is a banner called Achieving Shopping Annuity Master Member. And it's, in a, it's a, a banner that allows you to download um, actually this guide. So I actually printed my guide out. Um, this is called Achieving Shopping Annuity Master Member. It's actually available on Unfranchise Downloads. It's also available on uh, UnfranchiseTraining.com, on the Shopping Annuity page. Um, and, by the way, it's on your homepage of Unfranchise.com. So when you go there, there's a nice little banner there that says, like, click here for uh, 300 IBV examples. So as you guys know, um, the new Shopping Annuity Master Member program is actually going live on April 1st. And this program is 100% focused on earning, not spending. So very simply put, there is a BV target of 1,500 per quarter, and there is an IBV target of 300 IBV per quarter, and that starts on April 1st. Um, and so we went away from the $3,000 in spend, and we went toward the 300 IBV. And so the whole plan is like all about converting spending into earning, but most importantly, it is BV and IBV driven. And so the idea is it helps you to, to, to earn checks because everybody's focused on the correct thing, which is earning more, not spending more, right? Um, and so along with that, on Thursday, the 28th of February, um, all of the shopping annuity products became available with IBV. So you can actually work toward your shopping annuity master member status that way, which is pretty exciting. I know, everybody's excited about that. So this guide um, actually is three sections. So the first section is 1,500 BV per quarter examples. And so what this basically is, is the, the, the cover page kind of talks about why exclusive products. So it talks about how our exclusive products are superior in quality, they have the best prices, and they have the highest commissionable value because you're getting an average of you know anywhere from 65 to 80 percent BV per dollar. Then the next page kind of maps out all of the weeks that it could take of uh, to work toward the 1500 and a quarter. So if you're going to do 1500 BV and a quarter of personal use, transferring your products over to your exclusive products, you should be placing an order of about 125 BV per week. So what this guide does is it gives you a couple of examples, right? So in week one, you might be doing general health. In week two, you might be doing digestive health. In week three, you might be doing beauty and skincare. And it kind of gives you a couple of product selections. Now the next section is the 300 IBV per quarter examples. Now everybody's been asking um, for Mark's example because it was so clear and so exciting and so easy to understand. Mark's example is in this download. So um, even though his slides are not available, um, his example is available. So just like the other section, it starts off with telling you the different ways to earn. Um, so it talks about the shopping annuity brand products, the super IBV, the marketplace, one cart, partner store, shop local, and additional ways to earn IBV. And then you're going to see multiple examples. So this is example one. Example one is actually JR's example. And it's what he would buy on a monthly basis to work toward 300 IBV per quarter. Um, example two, I think, was from Phil Guido. Um, example three is mine. And my, my, each of my months are a little bit different. But basically, every executive sales team member put together a monthly um, order of what they would do to achieve the 300 IBV uh, for the quarter. And what you'll find, by the way, in these examples is that most of the time you're spending half the money to earn two to three times the amount of IBV based on how people were doing it versus this way. Um, so the new program is incredible. Um, everybody, everybody needs to make it a goal. Like it has to be the number one goal on your calendar for April 1st is I'm going to hit Shopping Annuity Master Member um, in that quarter because there's no reason not to. Like, it's so easy, and the fact that it's BV and IBV driven, that should be reason enough to go for it because if everybody on your team did that, think about how much accumulated volume would be generated by the organization, right? Because it's all BV and IBV driven. It's all can, um, focused on earning rather than spending. So the reason I shared that with you is because on the homepage of unfranchise.com, actually you'll see a banner to download that, but you're also going to see some product carousels. Um, you're gonna see BB car uh, carousels, and it's things like the examples that are in this guide. 
So this particular week, the, the products that you're seeing for the BB recommendations are um, energy and performance base. So actually, Turn Up is one of the products that you'll see uh, featured there, which is exciting, right? So if you can't find the product, it's right on your homepage of OnFranchise.com. So you'll see that, that product grouping. And it just makes it easier so that when you log in to OnFranchise, if you're looking to hit Shopping Annuity Master Member, check out that BB Carousel for product recommendations for new things to try. Um, then below that, you're going to see IBB product groups. And those IBB product groups are going to be any kind of combination to help you work your way toward SAMM. It could be Shopping Annuity Brand Products. It could be Super IBB, which both of those are actually available right now. Right now, we're also featuring some really great bundles, some grocery bundles that are on there that have high IBB. Um, and also, we're going to be featuring a store of the week. So this week's store of the week is Etails. Um, and uh, it's always going to have a free shipping option. So again, we're trying to give you ways to chip away toward your SAMM status. Um, and that's what that homepage is really all about. In addition, you guys, every week we are going to be adding um, new content, new banners, new stores of the week, new product sets for BB, new IBB product sets, maybe videos. So like next week or uh, this week, you'll actually see some of Mark's um, videos about the new Shopping Annuity Master Member program because that will um, help to reinforce uh, those, those um, choices, right? Um, we're gonna be putting training videos up on there. But the point is, is that every single week when you log into unfranchise.com, that homepage is being like rethought to give you like weekly steps to make your way toward SAMM and success as an unfranchised owner in general, because there are other things on there like the pre-sell uh, convention, um, you know, master business building workshops will be up there, training videos, training audios, all that stuff is going to be there too. The reason that I wanted to spend some time talking about this today or tonight is because um, I want you to get in the habit of logging into unfranchise and looking. Um, closely at that stuff. It's changing. It's changing with a very specific intention, which is in alignment with your goals. Your goal is to hit Shopping Annuity Master Member, and so you have to understand that what's being merchandised or put on that homepage is going to help you to do that. So you don't have to worry, like, is this something else or is this some other thing to focus on? It's not. It's something that will help you to achieve your number one goal, which, of course, is SAMM. All right, so are there, if there's any questions on that, I'm just looking, lots of good feedback, it's, ex, it's exciting. If anybody has questions about anything, you can just totally pop them in the comments. I'm happy to do it. So, okay, so I, like I said, tonight's um, retailing segment was going to be um, a little bit shorter, but it's still really, really powerful. So, you know, I was talking with Gary Rogers um, last week. We went out for coffee and like, you know, we're just talking business and just catching up as friends or whatever. Um, and he was just talking about how um, you know, we really want to build up the retail skills in our organization. And I'm all about that. Like, I just really, really, really want um, to help people to have more customers that uh, not only order ongoing, but maybe order more than one or two things. So, you know, that's one thing that Gary's really great at. And, um, and like I said earlier, so is Phil Guido and so are a number of other people. Um, but you know, it's a number one goal of us, of, of us as unfranchise owners. We want to develop a small portfolio of customers that order ongoing products that we can, instead of, you know, instead of selling one product to a bunch of people that might not ever buy it again, we just find and service a few, a handful of customers really well, and we help to, you know, match them with product and product with people, right? So I was talking to them, I'm like, what do you think it is that helps you, like, to really um, build on those relationships? And, um, and he said, well, honestly, a big part of it is, is that I either deliver my products to my customers in person or I ship them myself. So in either scenario, whether he's dropping product off at the door or if he's shipping the product himself, he has a little bit of control over that experience. He can throw in a handwritten note. He can throw in additional samples or additional products for his customer to try. Um, which, as you all know, we all know, we've been trained on trial size marketing. When you can get product in somebody's hand and they can have an experience with that product, they are so much more likely to try it than if you just tell them about the product, right? 
Um, so here are a couple of tips from, from the top retailers. Number one, include a handwritten note, a text, or personal email to your customers when they purchase a product. So sometimes I'll get a notification that someone has purchased a product from um, my website. And what I'll do is I will um, either text that person's cell phone number if, you, if they have put it in when they registered, or send them an email and thank them for their order. Um, a personal one, not one that's like over the top, professional, pre-written bot kind of thing, like a real email that says, thanks so much for your order, I love that product, let me know um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. That simple. The second thing, the second tip is to include a few samples of other products in the box that it's delivered, whether it's an in-person delivery or um, if it's a, you know, a box that you're gonna just ship out yourself. Um, so what kind of samples should you include? So I always like to, to include samples of products that like pair well. So for example, if I'm hooked on turn up, right, which I am, <laughs> and, I'm, and my customer ordered a box of this product, what would be a nice sample to include in my delivery of that product? Turn down, right? It's really that simple. Um, this is better than taking a melatonin or, or especially a sleep aid, you know. Um, I won't get into that because that's a whole other product, but this pairs well with that, right? So if somebody orders a box of turn up, send two or three packets of turn down with them. Now we all know that yes, there's some cost involved in that because we're paying about a dollar and a half to a dollar ninety um, for these, but isn't it worth it if that turns that customer into a repeat order of two really great products that they can't live without? So that's really kind of the thought process behind that. Um, you know, some samples are a little bit uh, pricier than others to give away. Um, however, it depends on the person that you're talking to. So. For example, I have one customer that is like a skincare and makeup freak, like loves all that stuff, buys all of our stuff. These Lumiere uh, face masks are incredible, um, but they are not your TJ Maxx cheapo face masks. It's basically like what you could do instead of getting an actual facial, right? So if I'm going to go ahead and give one of these babies out, I'm going to make sure it's going to someone that really loves skincare and makeup and would you know would be committed to trying the product and actually repurchasing it so just keep that um, so keep that kind of stuff in mind you want to pair the right samples with the right people like you don't want to just kind of you know get a customer that's buying turn up and then send them like you know a fifty dollar facial mask right they might not even be interested in that type of product so you want to kind of keep it all related and I'm just gonna pause for a second because I saw a question orders from your personal site count toward BV goal right um, so so I just want to clarify this so if you have any orders that are coming from your retail sites then those will count toward master UFO because Master UFO um, criteria includes retail sales, but the Shopping Unity Master Member criteria is for personal use only. So you definitely want to just, if you click on those sections and on franchise, it clarifies what the criteria is for both, um, and you can see the differences there. Okay, back to retailing. Third thing, share a coupon code with your customers on their birthday or special occasions. Um, so. Again, if you're just managing a small portfolio of customers, like know when their birthdays are, know if they have an anniversary coming up, send them a little coupon code to say, you know, happy birthday or happy anniversary or, you know, happy new year, right? Um, and you can do that in a number of ways. We all have a coupon admin in on Franchise. If you click on my customers and coupon admin and marketing or something, you actually can send email coupon codes to to people that way. What's nice about doing it that way is it also loads in how much cash back that person has. So now that person is getting an email um, with their personal cash back amount and a coupon code. So they're doubly excited to maybe place an order. Um, another thing is those coupon codes that you have set to active, you don't have to use the email campaign system. You can actually just send those coupon codes via text or email or in that handwritten note. Happy birthday, here's 20% off MA, you know, use 20% off MA for your favorite products that you buy from me all the time. Um, again, it's just building on that relationship and helping to create repeat orders. Um, another, another little thing to do is offer a coupon code or even a free product to your customers when they send you new customers. 
Um, that is so easy to do, you guys. If somebody sends you a new customer, like, show them some love, right? Send them a coupon code or even send them a couple of samples to say thank you so much for that recommendation. It means a lot to me. My business is run on referrals. Um, and I really appreciate your referrals. So just show some love, build, build some relationships. The idea here is like not to let technology replace your relationships because it can't and it won't. And um, if you really want to have strong customer relationships, then you have to invest that time and the people to really care about them and make sure that you're matching them with the right product and showing that you are genuinely interested in, um, in, their, in their experience with the product. So let me just check again. Any other questions from there that I missed? Nope, just a couple comments. All right, perfect. Let's talk about business building real quick, y'all. So, okay, so as I said earlier, I thought that Dennis um, Franks really just does an amazing job of really mapping out, you know, when you sit down to show the business plan, what do you do before you actually open up the PowerPoint or a flip chart and sit down with your friend? The reality is, is like when you sit down with a friend or you're doing a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one, -on -one, there's so much stuff. There's so many other things. They call them the intangibles, the things that are happening and need to happen in that space that are even more important than what's on the slides. Now, we all know the unfranchised business presentation, the new one, is beautiful. It does such a great job of communicating what we're all about, the opportunity, and what's, you know, what's... The, the business is really gonna can do for them. But what about all the other stuff, right? What makes somebody a really great plan shower versus someone that's still learning? So I'm gonna kind of talk to you about that stuff. So first of all, let's just talk about a two on one. Say I'm the senior business partner and I'm gonna be showing the plan for my friend, um, Joe, and we're gonna be showing the plan to his uh, friend from the gym. So it's me, Joe, and friend from the gym, right? So there's one basic thing that you have to get right, right when you get started, which is where does everybody sit? <laughs> so if I'm showing the plan to this person here and I am right-handed, then what I wanna do is I want the person I'm showing the plan to to be on my right because I'm gonna be holding my paper this way and I'll probably be writing notes like this and I want the person that I'm showing it to to be able to see it comfortably and for me to have a really easy um, like physical time communicating with this person. And I want the person I'm showing it for to be sitting on my other side. So Joe, I'm showing the plan for Joe, can introduce and kind of lay the groundwork. I'm here in the middle and the prospect is on my right. If I was a lefty, I would put the prospect on my other side. I know it sounds so crazy, stupid, unimportant, but it is so important. I have sat down to do a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one -on with somebody where it's me, the person I'm showing it for, and then the prospect, and I feel like I'm like talking around somebody the whole time just to like communicate. And I can't do my I can't do the job right. I can't connect as well because I'm like literally talking above and around another human being. So the very first thing, I actually learned that from Marty Weissman, is where people sit is actually really important in the room. So you wanna kinda of make sure that you're seating people in the right place. Now the second thing is you need to also have your materials ready to show the plan. That means not just the plan, um, but additional tools that you may need. So what are some of the things that you need? You need your unfranchised business presentation, however you're gonna show that. Is it the PowerPoint? Is it a flip chart? Is it via the YouTube video? Is it your favorite person showing the plan? Is it the Dennis Franks version, the Ryan Stack version, the Andrew Weissman version? Um, is it an actual flip chart? Or is it the opportunity page on marketamerica.com and you're just simply gonna talk in themes for the day? Either way, you need to know when you actually get to the part where you show the information, how are you gonna do that? And you have to have it ready to go. Some additional tools that are good to have on hand um, are power profiles, knowing how to access the power profiles and what to do with them. Um, an unfranchised owner magazine, an annual report about MA document, maybe a product catalog, maybe it's the mini shopping annuity assessment, or maybe it's um, a home shopping list, right? There's lots of materials, and again, this is all in that unfranchised rundown um, email today, too. One little tip about this I'm going to show you right now is on um, the unfranchised prospecting app, um, which is free, um, you actually have the ability 
uh, to, to very easily access every single one of those assets that I just mentioned, except for the, the mini assessment, which is on your website, of course. Um, when you click on media, if you click on business opportunity, the UBP video, um, the shopping list, all of the presentations for every major, everything is preloaded in here. So that's kind of a quick way to access things. Now, let's get to the intangibles. So when the appointment begins, um, it's really important that you don't sit down with a prospect and start showing a PowerPoint right away because that can get super awkward. And you really wanna make sure that people are feeling confident and comfortable and relaxed because when they're comfort comfortable and relaxed, they can absorb information. When they're, when they're feeling stressed or rushed or like what is happening, like you're, you're jumping in this too quickly, um, then basically you're making them like put up a wall and they can't process your information. Um, so it's important to start off with a little bit of small talk, family, occupation, recreation. Now from there, this is another important little intangible. Thank them for their time and let them know and confirm when the ending time is going to be. Um, so important. These things can run on and on and on for so long um, or it'll feel like you're doing small talk for so long because you haven't set like a clear ending time. Um, I've actually done this, actually Charlie Bayer and I have done this, a couple of these together, and we did um, one of them where it ran for like two hours, and we're like, geez, how do we like comfortably end this so it doesn't feel awkward? One way to control that is to just thank them for their time, welcome, you know, very grateful for your time. Listen, this is only going to take about 45 minutes and then or an hour, whatever it's going to be, and then you can move on from there. Also, you want to let them know right at the beginning that there's literally no decision to be made. This is an exchange of information only. Um, so again, why am I doing that? I just want to relax. Um, I want to relax my prospect. I don't want them freaking out when I'm showing them the slides because they're worried that I'm going to ask them for money or to partner in my business at the end of the presentation because I'm not going to do that. Right, so I always let them know that there's no decision to be made today because I want their mind wide open, ready to receive information. From there, I'm gonna share a two minute commercial, which is my why. And really guys, a two minute commercial is a 30 second commercial. Um, the reason why is I wanna connect with that person um, you know, emotionally, right? And I wanna let them know that this is a real business that can help, that has helped real people and I happen to be one of them and this is why I'm doing it. So for me, I'll just say, you know, I started this business right when I was in college, going into my senior year. I wanted to earn a little bit of extra money because both my husband and I were music majors and it's not a whole lot of financial security in that industry. Um, and so we looked at this business for financial security and really that was what we wanted out of it. We built it, we loved that there was a proven system that backed it, um, that was very important to us given that we had very little business experience at all and here we are 14 years later and this is you know, what we do for, for an income. And then I'm done. Um, and then, but keep in mind, actually that's my second point because I'm so used to saying it, when you share your why, it also can be helpful to share why you looked at the unfranchised business. So why did you build it for yourself? That's your emotional connection. And then why the unfranchised business? So when I did that, I was specifically focused on the proven plan. And the reason I did that was because that was my reason why I looked, right? So your reason why you looked might be just a little bit different than mine, that's okay. Maybe you liked this because you really loved all of the tools and technology that you got with your site um, that allows you to operate your business professionally or you love the, a product line. Maybe you looked at this because the wellness products changed your lives, right? It, your, your reason why is your reason why. Why you're building it um, you know, for personal reasons and why you looked at it for the unfranchised business. Um, but again, that's when the appointment begins. It's small talk, overview, confirm the ending, thank them for their time, there's no decision to be made, a 30 second commercial about yourself and why the unfranchised business. So now we're gonna shift the, the conversation from me to you. So remember, the, the, it's not about you. So like your reason why shouldn't be the main focus of the plan. 
really your the main focus of the plan is the person you're showing it to right so after you've done that you've shown a little vulnerability you've gotten them to think about this stuff so go out now you're going to actually get to asking them that um so one way to transition into that is to share some of your favorite success stories um, and that's why I said it's important to know about the power profile. So what is the best power profile to share with somebody? Um, to me, the best power profile is the one that they're going to connect with the most. Um, so for some people, it's Elizabeth Weber. For other people, it's, you know, um, this person is a teacher and I found a really great power profile of a teacher. Or I'm sitting down and I'm showing the plan to a roofer, so I'm going to show them Don and Lisa Martin, right? Because Don Martin was a roofer. And I want them to connect. And so that's why it's important to know how to use those power profiles because it can really, really serve you well um, and help you to get your prospect or the prospect to open up about their reason why. Because at the end of the day, they're sitting in that chair for a reason. And your job when you're showing the plan, again, it's not what's on the slides. It's what happens in between the slides that's the most important. So your job when you're showing the plan is to get them to share that with you. So after you've shared your quick story and you maybe shared a success story that you thought that they might be able to resonate with, you're going to go ahead and you're going to ask them, okay, so let's, you know, before I show you how our business works and how unfranchised owners earn money, let's assume that this worked for you, okay? And, um, and, and you actually could do what you want. It would do what you wanted it to do. What would that be? What amount of money would it take? What would it cost? Um, and, and how would that make you feel? Right? And so the questions that, that Dennis asks are, what do you want, why do you want it, when do you want it by, and how would it make you feel? Those are the four big questions. All of this is happening before you show the PowerPoint presentation. So again, you always wonder, like, what makes a person a really good plan shower? And to me, the best plan showers are the people that are the best listeners. Um, they're the people that can get people to relax and they're the people that can get people to open up and so the, the way that you do that is asking questions and showing interest and being genuinely interested in the person that you're showing the plan to um, so to recap from there you had your appointment has begun you did your small talk you thanked them for their time you let them know the ending time um, you let them know that there was no decision to be made, your quick 30 second uh, commercial and why the unfranchised business, then you start to shift gears a little bit, right? And you share a little bit of a, a success story that you think that they could resonate with so that now we're at the most important part, which is finding out why they're here. If this business could do what you want it to do, if it did everything that you wanted to do, what would it do? Why would you want it to, what, what do you want? Why would, it, why would it be important to you? When would you want it by? How much would it cost? How would it make you feel if you could achieve that? Now when, they, now, when you're ready to actually share the presentation, in the back of their mind, whether or not like, they like it, <laughs> they're thinking about that big reason why. And while they're thinking about that big reason why, they're seeing the plan and they are making connections that otherwise would not have been made if you didn't do the work first, if you didn't ask the question first, if you didn't get them thinking about themselves first. And that's why it's so important, you guys, to do it the right way, to really hit it hard that way, you guys. So at that point, you're sharing the plan, whether it's the slides, the video, the flip chart, um, maybe it's an area of specialization, or maybe it's a shopping annuity, you're sharing the business part. And then of course, when you're done, you're hitting that emotional cord again, referring back to what they want and why they want it, how it would make them feel, and you use that to book the follow-up, whether it's a UVP or a local seminar or some other follow-up appointment or a trial run, right? So um, those were my big tips. I know I went hard on that, you guys, but I just think it's so incredibly important um, that we get back to showing tons of plans and we get back to showing plans correctly. Um, which is keeping in mind that the most important thing about showing the plan is the person that you're showing it to. So just show a little love to that person um, and make sure uh, you're connecting with people. And then it doesn't matter what you say on the slides because if you make a connection, you make a connection. 
All right, so we're going to hit up real quick the unfranchised support materials. And I'm not going to hit this so hard tonight because we are kind of coming in for a landing here. But the new support materials I want to let everybody know is going live uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'm very excited about it. It's been a long time coming. Um, it's a beautiful new design, um, brand new organization. There's four organ uh, top-level uh, categories of um, materials. One is business administration. Second is training and events. Third is recruiting and sales. And four is university majors and specialties. And I'm going to hit a couple of highlights. The files are smarter. So every file is a, um, or a piece of information is treated like a product. What that basically means is every product has a title, a description, it has keywords, people, language, countries. Um, it tells you how big the file is and what type of file it, what type of file it is. So you can decide if you want to download it, share it, or whatever. Um, there's improved search. Um, so within the new downloads, if you search um, all categories, uh, you will find what you're looking for. If you have filters applied, just keep in mind that um, you will only be searching within that filtered area. Related materials, this is my favorite part. So um, let's say that this is a uh, It's Your Time to Shine event uh, PowerPoint presentation. And this is the It's Your Time to Shine event uh, receipt pad. When I, as a new one franchise owner, find this one file, um, this, is, this actually um, is great, but I need the receipt pad to do the event. So it's just like when you find a product that goes with another product. When I click on this one, it says, this one goes with this one. You want to download both. So I absolutely love that because it just makes it easier to find stuff, and you don't have to worry about you know, um, missing materials that go together or that you should have downloaded. The same thing is true for derivatives. So if I have the English PowerPoint presentation um, and I'm looking for the Chinese version, then when I, when I locate the English one at the very bottom, I'm going to see all of the other languages of that exact material. So this material is available in Chinese and Spanish and French. I'm going to see all three um, languages at the bottom. Um, in addition, we have some other quick highlights. We have familiar languages and verbiage. So just like our websites, just like the new PowerPoint um, UVP presentation, and just like the About MA document, things are um, referred to and noted um, in a familiar language that um, has continuity across everything that we do. So a very simple example of that is when you are looking, especially a new person, is looking to learn about our products, they might not resonate or understand the brand names, but they do understand the industries. So when you go to the university majors and specialty section, rather than say, this is the Lumiere de Vie section, we say, this is the skincare section dash Lumiere de Vie. Um, and this way, a new person goes, OK, that's skincare. I want to check that out a little bit more. Or rather than say, this is the section for isotonics. They might not know what isotonics is, but they know what health and nutrition is. So we have continuity of, um, of language across all of our materials that way. Um, last little thing here is, I just want to bring your attention to this because we're totally running out of time. This is going to be um, a blog article on being J.R. Reidinger tomorrow. This project goes live tomorrow. I cannot wait for it. I'm so insanely excited for it. Um, because it's been a long time coming and it's going to be so much easier to find the materials that you want and to, and to explore um, new things that you maybe didn't even know we had. Um, but on beingjrreidinger.com tomorrow, you're going to see all of the highlights and you're going to see the top 10 frequently asked questions as well. So the questions that you'll find answers to is how to access the support materials, how to perform a keyword search, how to apply or remove a filter, uh, what is a related material? What is a derivative, which is the language one I mentioned? Um, what's the difference between browse all categories or just categories? How to download, how to share, um, how to see important details, and um, the difference between HPs and NCs because they actually have um, a different experience. They get more materials in theirs than other people do. Okay, so finally, the very last segment of the night, I hope this was helpful for you guys today. I mean, we really hit a lot of things pretty hard tonight. But the last section of tonight is the um, uh, international convention. So I just want to mention to everybody, I don't think I have to say this, but this previous world conference was probably one of the most, if not the most powerful and important conference that we've had 
in, a, in years. Um, it was life changing on so many levels. We have so many um, people that have written in to JR, Steve, Mark, Lauren, Jim, Andrew, the whole corporate team saying how much they got out of this event. From a business building perspective, um, from a the company is moving faster than ever perspective, um, from a profitability perspective, the event was just mind-blowing and life-changing. So um, we are actually going to be putting up a recap article that goes through all of the blogs and videos and the UFO takeaways. So the top te all of the testimonials that people sent in were actually, they are available on beingjrridinger.com called MAWC 2019, Share Your Stories and Feedback with Me. So if you check out that article, you can actually see what people got from attending the World Conference. And before I let everybody go tonight, I wanna let you guys know that next week we are gonna be running a campaign uh, through the Market America social media accounts, through Facebook and Instagram. And it's gonna be called, Are You a Chicken, a Duck, or a Goose? So if you have one ticket, you're a chicken. You have two, you're a duck. If you have three, you're a goose. And we want everybody to commit to getting their free tickets. I can tell you right now um, that in the history of this company, uh, post event because of all of the buzz about what happened at World Conference, tickets are flying out the door. Um, there is a very good chance that you will not be able to get tickets. So um, we are going to continue to build on that momentum. The company is moving faster than ever. Um, we just had another SA Summit meeting um, on the corporate team last week on Thursday. And like, I mean, I'm telling you guys, like Chris, J uh, JR, Mark, Lauren, Steve, Gene, Michael, I, I don't want to forget people, but Everybody is working at like a superhuman pace. The shopping annuity is growing faster um, in this past year uh, than you could possibly understand. Um, and people are aware of that. And that's why the growth is happening. That's why the tickets are flying out. And, I, and I'm, I'm being dead serious. Like you might not be able to get a ticket. So um, please, 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 if you don't have your tickets yet, make sure that you get them. You can, if you go into unfranchise.com, again, that homepage is all redesigned. There's a banner there for tickets. I highly recommend that you get at least three, one for you and one for two new people that you're going to be bringing with you to the international convention. Um, if you want to, again, kind of read up a little bit more on what people have taken away from the past event, go to beingjrreidinger.com and check out that blog article because um, it's all there. You know, it's not what we said. We didn't even ask for this feedback. JR didn't even say, like, everybody send me your stuff. People just did it because it was that powerful. Um, so. Let's just go ahead and recap. Socially speaking, I went over optimal posting times and frequencies, shopping annuity hack, checking out that homepage at the beginning of every week because it's going to be different. Consumer corner, everybody's going to be trying to turn up. It's cheaper than Starbucks and 900 times better. Um, retailing, sharing samples and handwritten notes or text messages or emails, personal messages with your customers. Business building, I really hope you guys that walking y'all through like the intangibles of showing the plan was helpful. Um, the unfranchised support materials is going live tomorrow, um, sometime in the late afternoon, so check in for that. Check for the article, too, and the frequently asked questions, and I, and I challenge you to go find um, some, and explore and maybe discover something you didn't even know we had. Um, and then, of course, the GMTSS Roundup. Get your tickets before you can. I'm just going to say it. Get your tickets before you can. Um, next week, we're doing that campaign, Are You a Chicken, a Duck, or a Goose? We'll be giving away... Um, uh, some free tickets for people that participate in that. I don't want to give too much away, but you can check on um, each of those channels and on the blog for more information about that next week. Um, you guys, I've been checking out here, uh, and I reached out to several leaders. No one got back to me. I'm new and just got my kit Friday. Okay, Dini, if you have um, or yeah, if you have any questions, I can actually reply to you offline when this is done. Um, happy to help you and connect you with someone that can help. I love that honk from John Turner. That's amazing. Um, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you have a great week and a great month, and I will see you that first week in April for the next edition of the Go Now Game Plan. I hope it's been valuable for you. Guys, make it a great week, and I will see you soon. Take care.